you must know that there are different tastes. There are also different powers of digestion, different temperaments, differences in the capacity to comprehend. But by the mind one is bound, by the mind one is freed. One who asserts with strong conviction, I am not bound, I am free, becomes free. As a boy holding to a post or a pillar, whirls about it with headlong speed, without any fear of falling, so perform your worldly duties, fixing your hold firmly upon God, and you will be free from danger. It is true that God is even in the tiger, but we must not go and face the animal. So it is true that God dwells even in the most wicked, but it is not meant that we should associate with the wicked. One cannot be spiritual as long as one has shame, hatred, or fear. Have love for everyone. No one is other than you. Sunlight is one and the same wherever it falls, but only a bright surface like that of water or of a mirror reflects it fully. So is the light of the divine. It falls equally and impartially on all hearts but the pure and pious hearts of the holy receive and reflect that light well. We laugh at the efforts of the musk deer to find the source of the scent, which comes from itself, and despair at our efforts to find the peace, which is our essence. As a piece of rope, when burnt, retains its form, but cannot serve to bind, so is the ego, which is burnt by the fire of supreme knowledge. Pray to the divine any way you like. You can hear even the footfall of an ant.
when an unbaked pot is broken. The potter can use the mud to make a new one. But when a baked one is broken, he cannot do the same any longer. So when a person dies in a state of ignorance, they are born again. But when one becomes well baked in the fire of true knowledge and dies a perfect one, they are not born again. The waves belong to the water. Does the water belong to the waves? The absolute is like the unfathomable ocean. Nothing can be predicated of it. The being beyond the bounds of relativity, of all existence. The last feeble attempt to describe this being, the attempt made in the Vedas, is to call it by the name of Bliss Everlasting. If you are asked to describe the ocean, you stand with your mouth wide open and can only stammer out, oh, how vast an expanse, what a never-ending succession of gigantic waves, what thunderous sound, incessant and eternal. That is all. The utmost that certain sages could ever do was to see and to touch the water of this immortal sea and just taste a bit. Had they once gone down into that sea, they would have merged in it, never to come back into this world anymore. Once upon a time, there came some ants to a mountain of sugar. 
They, of course, had no idea that it was such a big thing. They ate up a few grains of the sugar and were filled. Then each took away a particle. As they went their way, they thought the next time they would be able to carry away the whole mountain to their place of habitation. Such, alas, is the condition of humans. It is given to some few, indeed, to realise the Supreme Being. But many, unfortunately, run away with the idea that they have fully known, fully enjoyed communion with, fully realised the infinite being. The mountain of sugar seems all but carried home by the ant. For are they not filled and satisfied with their meal? Thus too, the self-deluded rationalist. They are satisfied with their ounce of reason. Ergo, they comprehend Brahman. They know what the Absolute is and what it is not. People talk glibly of the infinite, the absolute, the unconditioned, as if they had any conception of it at all. Many holy sages were at best ants of the larger sort. If we say that they could eat up eight or ten particles of this sugar, we have said enough in their favour. It is just as absurd to say that God, the Absolute, has been known and comprehended by anyone as it is to say that a mountain of sugar has been carried home by some ants to be eaten up. The union between the undifferentiated and the differentiated is the goal of the Vedantam. Once upon a time a doll made of salt went to the sea with a view to measure its depth. This salt doll had in its hand a sounding line and plummet. It came to the edge of the water and looked on the mighty ocean that was before it. Up to this point it had continued to be the doll of salt that it actually was, keeping in its own individuality. But no sooner did it take one step forward and put its foot to the water than it became one with the ocean, lost, entirely lost to view.
every particle of the salt doll now dissolved in the seawater. The salt of which it was made had come from the ocean. And behold, it came back once more to be reunited to the original salt of the ocean. The differentiated had again become one with the undifferentiated. The human soul is this salt doll, the differentiated, individualized ego, the absolute, the unconditioned, is the infinite salt ocean, the undifferentiated ego. The salt doll could not come back and tell of the depth of the mighty ocean. Such is the one who was fortunate enough to realize God, the absolute, in the unfathomable depth of samadhi, which wipes out all individuality. Undifferentiated as they are, they come not back out of the deep to tell the world the nature of God, the absolute and unconditioned. For if it were ever possible, by my mother's will, for the salt doll to come back to the differentiated again, it must speak in terms of the finite in the language of the differentiated. It must behave like an inhabitant of the relative, phenomenal world. This is why the great mystery defies all attempts at explanation. The absolute and unconditioned cannot be stated in terms of the relative, the conditioned. The infinite cannot be expressed in terms of the finite. One who has true knowledge ceases to have anything to do with talk or controversy. The absolute is the one substance to be realized, not described or known. The sign of true knowledge or realization is cessation of doubt. 
and therefore of all philosophical discussions.